Hi, it's Florian. Today I'm going to talk about the seven things you should know when you want to introduce Scrum in teams of uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, or maybe even mixed teams. Uh, I did that for quite some time right now. I uh, did it as a Scrum Master, as a uh, trainer, and also as a manager. So uh, I want to share my experiences and maybe prevent you from making mistakes that you don't need to make. So let's get right into it. Number one, be prepared. You always need to be prepared if you uh, are in change processes, but especially if you are in one where uh, there is not much literature, much literature about it. There's a lot of literature how to implement Scrum in software, uh, how to implement it in embedded software, but not for mechanics in electronic engineering. But it still works. There's just not so much to read about it. Uh, so you need to be really good prepared. Read the literature, uh, read the books of the guys who came up with Scrum, take some trainings, think about the Agile Manifesto, what it means for you, what it means for your team. Um, then, of course, get management support. Get the support of your superiors. They need to be also willing to drive Scrum and to support it. Um, of course, and be uh, aware that there might be a lot of resistance. There might be a lot of people um, who maybe also undermine it and uh, just don't want to change. They just want to keep on working as they did before. And that I found is even uh, more the case with mechanical and uh, electrical engineers. But once they got used to it, it usually works. So be really well prepared and choose the team wisely. So when you started, choose who you put in the team, who you don't, who's a scrum master, um, but uh, do not just pick a bunch of guys who don't want to do it. Uh, the first team is the most important one. If it succeeds, it gives uh, a good uh, picture to all the others. So uh, you can then always build on that. So prepare really well, start good. And uh, that was the first tip. So second tip. Facilitate. So you should facilitate, of course, Scrum teams. And uh, the facilitator role that uh, might fit best is the Scrum Master. And if you are really uh, eager to uh, to implement it, either choose someone who really who you really trust can be a Scrum Master, or do it on your own. Uh, so uh, think about the questions that might come from the team, and how you might answer them. Uh, I will give you in the next uh, five points uh, some answers uh, and some uh, questions that might hit you, definitely. But you need to have a good facilitator, someone who is good with people, someone uh, who, who can really uh, take the emotions of people and then um, act on them accordingly. And uh, of course, who also has a lot of answers quite quickly to maybe sometimes stupid questions, but uh, you still need to answer them. So choose the facilitator right. Second tip. The third tip I can give you, and now it comes to the more details you need to know if you are a mechanical or electrical engineer. Scrum needs to fit in your process. So one thing you need to know is that you cannot change the Scrum process. You don't do that. A daily stand-up is a daily stand-up and a retrospective you have to do, you can't leave it away. So you have this new Scrum process, but you also have a process in your company usually, a release process uh, that, uh, how to release projects, how to get them ready for production, uh, maybe how to produce them externally or how to supply and um, all of this is still valid if you do Scrum. So you need to know how does this process fit into Scrum uh, and it usually does so you have uh, some external dependencies that might or might not work uh, and uh, if they don't work they won't work with Scrum also so Scrum won't fix that for you but it gives you a uh, transparency of what doesn't work so uh, if you have a process that's not really working well or where some points are not really working well you will definitely see it with Scrum and you should never blame Scrum for it it's usually something else and uh, if you deal with these external dependencies during 
um, during your release process, what the best thing you can do is actually invite them into your sprint planning, invite them into the daily stand-up so they can report what's happening. And uh, that works really well. So actually uh, what, is, what is good is with, uh, with Grum is that uh, external dependencies like production uh, or purchasing uh, can come to the daily stand-ups and always meet the whole team. Uh, there's always a quick decision if, thing, if things go wrong or don't work uh, as they're supposed to do. So it is much easier with Scrum than without Scrum uh, for these external dependencies to talk to the team. But you still need to involve them and that is something you should consider how to, when and who before you start Scrum. The fourth thing you should know uh, what you should consider when you do scrum in electronics or mechanics is that usually the tasks there take longer. So you need some kind of overall planning. It is much more sequential than in, in software or embedded software. Uh, you have uh, to do prototypes, for example, before you can put them into an EMC testing or whatever. So you always have a really long and usually longer than a sprint um, sequential thing. So the overall planning is really important and you shouldn't neglect it. So you can do Scrum and still have some kind of rough Gantt chart next to it. It is not uh, forbidden to have that. Scrum doesn't tell you that you shouldn't. It just uh, tells you that you have to have a prioritized backlog, which can come from this um, overall planning. And you should have it because uh, you don't see the critical path otherwise. You have lead times for components, you have um, a lot of dependencies with production that you need to be aware of and the whole team needs to be aware of. So you usually need this overall planning and uh, you should do that. So before the project starts, you should have a rough planning, you should maybe review it every quarter, um, but you can then take it as a guideline for your sprint plannings. So, Really important, have an overall plan if you do it with mechanics and electronics. And by the way, if you do a software, it's also not forbidden to have an overall plan. Tip number five, waiting and lead times. As you might know, you have waiting times and lead times if you have electronics that must be produced uh, or assembled, or if you have a mechanic that needs to be machined in some machine shop, usually wait for it. And you usually get the question, how do I estimate wait times? And what you do is you don't estimate waiting times. You just estimate the work that people do. And the hard thing for engineers, uh, especially the mechanical and electronical ones, is actually to split their work. Because they usually, they are used to see the the whole product, they see it from I start with my layout and I get the prototype. But that is not what you do in Scrum. Uh, and then they ask, yeah, how do I estimate the lead times and it takes me eight weeks and I can't do stories from it. So what you should do is you should remind them that everything they do is sequential. Like in software, like in web development, like anywhere else, people work in a sequential way. And then you can ask where to split it. And what you usually do with lead times is you don't estimate them. You just estimate uh, when you talk to a supplier, for example, that is really effort you have to do from the team. And maybe uh, taking the feedback is also effort, but the waiting time is not. So you just don't estimate lead times. But what you do is you, you uh, split the sequential way that people are used to thinking into small parts. And that is also the, the most difficult thing for engineers that they are not used to it and they don't know how to. Um, so they need, uh, especially at the beginning, a lot of help and a lot of facilitation in the Scrum team to guide them in doing that. Number six, sprint goals. And that's an often neglected thing, but it's really important for uh, hardware and mechanics to have good sprint goals. So in Scrum, every sprint should have some goal, which is a tangible, result. So uh, it should deliver some value, uh, customer value, uh, but that is often hard for mechanics and electronics that you see customer value instantly. And that is usually also a, a huge point of discussion 
that people uh, miss this customer value. They say, I can, you can do it in software, you can program a new function and then you see immediately that the customer has a benefit from it. But I don't because my time is, is, is so long. Uh, but still, they can show things. So you should have a sprint goal that maybe relates to the product, uh, especially at the beginning. So for example, the layout is ready and uh, it's a new layout tool. So the engineer in the uh, sprint review can show this and you could have a sprint goal that tells you layout ready for example or you can have a sprint goal that tells you CAD uh, design is done for a mechanical engineer so it doesn't necessarily need to be a, a customer related one and it's often hard to have one but you should choose them wisely because you should uh, after that show them in the sprint review you sh uh, people should know what they are working for they should know what is the what is expected from me in the next two to three weeks and i uh, advise you not to choose three weeks in the beginning but two because uh, it's uh, really hard to plan for a longer time and it takes quite long so sprint goals are really important and you should think about what your sprint goal is especially in electronics and mechanics number seven find a good product owner. That is especially hard in hardware and, and uh, mechanics. It is also hard in every other discipline. Uh, that was the, or is the thing most companies struggle with, is finding product owners. Because this role is not um, common, uh, actually. Uh, it should be, if you read it, 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 it should be something that every company has and that every project has. The guy who is responsible for prioritizing and uh, for spending the budget and delivering the customer value and defining it, explaining it to the team. But it's really hard to find someone like that. Um, and you should maybe think about why. Uh, I won't answer this question, but it is extremely hard and it's an extremely tough job. And it run, when it comes to mechanical and electronical engineering, um, it is even harder because you don't see this customer value delivery so quickly. Um, so what I uh, learned and was usually the case is that a product owner needs to be an, an architect with an MBA. So you need someone who knows the business and who knows the product in some kind of detail. And uh, those people are usually the, the project managers or maybe senior engineers. It's not necessarily a product manager. So you should think about who can it be for you? Who is the right guy to, uh, to do a product owner in your company? If it is a senior engineer, he shouldn't work in the project. He can work in, an, in another project, but he should be only the product owner, nothing else. So stick to the process. Don't change the process. Never do. Never say, doesn't work for me. I will change the scrum process because then you don't do scrum and you don't do the change process. And now some last words. If you really want to implement scrum in hardware and electronics, you must follow through. It is quite important not to, uh, to, to fold and to uh, run away at the first uh, issue. You should follow through. You should always make uh, same decisions. So usually uh, you, it, it is not, uh, it, Scrum doesn't tell you to do stupid things. It just tells you to plan and then to review yourself and have a retrospective about the process. It doesn't really tell you to do stupid things. You can have that, of course, in mechanical and electrical engineering also. There's no reason why you shouldn't. The, the major thing people don't like is that they have to plan, actually. They are used to to work um, and in much longer uh, distances and much longer projects. Uh, they, they, the things they plan go over a few months sometimes and they are not used to doing it in a short uh, cadence. But you need to tell them how to, you need to help them and uh, it is possible. So just do it, try it and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you.